Alright guys, so why do you want to use this build? Let me explain it to you. So first, first things first, let's talk a little bit about Sanctuary, okay? Sanctuary obviously breaks when you do damage to people, right? But there are certain things that interact with this in a way that won't break it. Um, the main thing that we're talking about today is Moonbeam, okay? Moonbeam and Move Moonbeam do not break Sanctuary even if you deal damage with the spell, that's right. So Druids get this at level three and one of the Paladin Oaths get this at level five. So obviously we're rolling Druid and we're going to abuse this throughout the entire game. Because Sanctuary, you guys know it, for 10 turns, you're not taking damage, you're not getting hit, except if you get in an AOE or some shit. But as long as you position properly, uh, away from your team, I don't think the AI even know, even like on honor mode or something like that, they don't even know to use an AI, how to use an AOE on you. Uh, unless you're near someone else. And if they do, then it's just AoEs. You know, you're probably not going to die to one. 99% uh, of the game, you're basically not going to be getting hit, right? And yet you're still doing damage with Moonbeam. There's also some other things that uh, work with this as well. So yeah, it is a concentration spell, considering you're going to have to move it. But it is only uh, level 2, and obviously you can cast it at any higher level. You're probably going to want to be upcasting it to the highest possible, since when you upcast Moonbeam, you're going to be doing additional damage. It adds a D10 per upcast which is a big deal i uh, probably don't want to use a level six one for it but level fives level fours you've got a decent amount of those at level 12 that you can use and you can always use your natural recovery charge from your circle of the land to replen some spell slots it's basically the same thing as the wizard replen uh, but yeah that's the big thing about it so you can break people's concentration with sleet storm uh, you don't only have to be dealing damage, but this is the big thing about it. You can still deal good damage, and Radiant is a pretty good fucking, uh, I don't know, element as well. A lot of people, especially in Act 2, most of the enemies are uh, vulnerable to Radiant, and then Radiant is just usually, people aren't uh, resistant to it, unless they're resistant to everything. Uh, but yeah, you can still have Utility with Sleet Storm. Obviously, you're not going to be getting hit in Sanctuary. Uh, you can heal your team, you could, uh, if you wanted, you could haste them, but like I said, you won't be able to use Moonbeam if you do haste them. Uh, and also summons. Summons don't break this. That means any summon you can think of, uh, whatever you can get, go ahead and get that shit, and then you can summon them, and yeah, it won't break your Sanctuary. Uh, so yeah, summons are gonna be great. Otherwise, yeah, anything damaging is not gonna be good, but you have good options for being someone who's literally immortal. Okay, let me uh, give you an example of this, by the way. Sanctuary, boom. All right, as you can see, I'm sanctuary, right? Let me enter turn-based mode. I've got the Moonbeam available to be moved. Let's go ahead and move it onto Withers. Withers gets hit by Moonbeam, right? Still got Sanctuary. All right, let's go ahead and hit, uh, I guess, myself with it. Let's go ahead and just exit turn-based mode and move the Moonbeam over to me. Maybe Withers didn't take damage, so it wouldn't count, right? But I took damage. Look, still got Sanctuary, right? Excellent. Okay, well, let's try a summon, okay? Let's summon a, an Elemental, okay? Summon an Elemental, enter turn-based mode, okay? We'll have it attack both Withers, who's not an enemy, or who, who could be considered an enemy, right? And we'll have him attack me, who will take damage. Okay, he attacks Withers. Still got Sanctuary, right? Exit turn base mode. Have him attack me. There we go. He hit me. Still have sanctuary. Okay, so you guys see summons won't break your sanctuary as long as they're like a little little thing next to my portrait. They won't break my sanctuary, right? So that's excellent. This 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 build is going to basically make you an immortal damage dealer. All right. So character creation slash level one. I don't think that uh, your your race really matters. Um, I'd probably opt for somebody who could go who could run the thirty meters. Or maybe even a wood elf who could run more uh but it really doesn't matter so pick whatever you want class we're gonna need to actually do cleric first because we want sanctuary off rip uh if you're playing honor especially uh you're, you're gonna want sanctuary early on uh even the little brain guys pose a challenge right after and it, it gives you a guaranteed escape from the nautiloid um, which is which is pretty good. Not that you'll probably need it, but if you're doing like solo or something, that's a good option. Cantrips, Blade Ward, you're gonna want early on. Resistance is ass, right? Uh, Produce Flame is not bad for an attack cantrip. Uh, Sacred Flame is good as well, though. Guidance is pretty much a necessity on a cleric, um, unless you've got another one. But I mean, do you really have two clerics? Probably not. Life Domain, obviously, you could do Light Domain. I don't see um, any of these other. If you really wanted to do Nature, I guess that synergizes in an interesting way. Uh, but I don't think so. And I'm, I don't think so, dude. Honestly, even though you're going to roll Druid, 
Um, I think light is fine, but you would probably want to put more into light, uh, like more levels. And I, I, I prefer that you go full Druid 11 levels so that you can get the level 6 spell because the Feast, whatever it is, Feast or Heal are both really good options. And having that level 6 spell slot, you could also upcast um, Moonbeam if you really wanted to, whereas you're not going to get it as uh, if you put like two levels in the light domain. So I would just take life, plus you're getting heavy armor. Just in case somebody hits you with like an AoE or something, you have a higher chance to dodge it. Um, it's also nice to just have heavy armor proficiency no matter what. Maybe your your other classes don't have it. And even if you do have it, you can still equip medium armor type shit. You feel me? Uh, but yeah, healing is good. You get cure wounds, which is great. Bless you could use. However, this is obviously concentration. Disciple of life is really nice. You get additional healing always good um life domain is just so good deity doesn't matter proficiencies we don't care about strength at all we're not going to be melee attacking people throughout this whole build and if we do attack people in the early game before we get access to moonbeam uh we're not going to be hitting them with a fucking melee weapon okay we've got cantrips we've got spells we're good dude we're good and we're mostly going to be focusing on healing probably providing utility to the team uh wisdom is what we're going to pump hard right charisma we don't really care about uh, dexterity is nice to get to 16 it'll give you a little boost to armor class if you're not wearing heavy armor uh, but mainly for the initiative bonus the earlier we go the better constitution we want at 14 uh, in case we get hit by some aoe we want more health right uh, and we, we need to stay alive for the team and if we are getting let's say we're in outer mode or some shit and some guy is abusing aoe's on us though i don't really think that's going to happen uh, we want to take as, the least amount as possible and we want to make any constitution checks slash um concentration checks as well with con uh proficiencies what are we going to do here we don't have a lot of options i think i have persuasion from my background or something so it really doesn't matter what you take here because you're not going to get anything that you actually want due to the cleric one uh athletics acrobatics sleight of hand self uh if you can't get persuasion from your background i would take that just in case but you're not going to be the main guy you should make this one of your side characters uh, or if this is a solo, that's fine. You could should try to get persuasion with your background, but you're not going to be a charisma guy. That's why we're setting charisma at 10, because just in case, you know, we don't want to have negative charisma. We never do. Uh, but yeah, proficiencies aren't going to matter. Okay, so level two, this is where we're going to spec in a druid. Multi-class in a druid here. Boom, boom. Okay, cantrips. Let's take Shalala, right? If we do want to do some melee attacks, it is magical now. It's going to do a certain amount, and it's going to use our spellcasting ability for attack rolls, which is wisdom. That's why we don't give a shit about strength as well. Shalala can be very helpful for that. Uh, we already took the other ones we wanted. Thorn Whip, I think, is a good one. Uh, I never like resistance, honestly, but resistance, maybe. Uh, it's a concentration, too. Concentration kind of makes me want to throw up in my mouth. Um, for something like this. Produce Flame can be okay, like I said. But yeah, Thorn Whip I like. Bring people closer. Maybe you can pull them off the edge or something. Maybe you can pull them into an AoE. But Shalala is really good. Prepare the spells. Uh, what do we want here? We probably... I like Thunder Wave a lot for these early levels. You can knock a lot of people off the fucking cliff or to their death. Uh, cure Wounds. I mean, I think we have already got this, right? But, um, I mean, if it says we can prepare it, why not? Um... Goodberry is lovely. I love good Goodberry, guys. I think you should have this. Speak with animals might be fun. Uh, I really like Longstrider. I believe this is a ritual. It doesn't say it here, but from what I've seen, it's a ritual spell, so it doesn't even cost a spell slot. This could be good. You guys already know I love Creator Destroy Water. If you check out my Abjuration uh, Wizard build, you'll know that this is a great fucking spell. I think you should definitely grab. Uh, if you can get people wet in this game, there's a lot that synergizes it. Any cold, any lightning um and if you have an abjuration wizard in your party you're going to really want this, this is going to be super super useful for you i don't think creator destroy water breaks uh your sanctuary why would it you're not doing damage you're not really harming anyone you're just getting them a little wet it's like a little bit of play time if you squirted someone with a squirt gun would you break your sanctuary i don't fucking think so right all right so let's go next that's a pretty good spell to take i think honestly pretty necessary you should have somebody casting cold or uh lightning those are really good builds. A lot of really good builds out there. Obviously, we're just going to pump Druid. Uh, I could see Circle of Spores, but really we're going to do Circle of Land so we can restore some spell slots. Uh, we also get some decent things with this. Uh, I would take Produce Flame here. Anything I, We're going to, at the end of the day, have to take every cantrip anyway. But, uh, but yeah, Ice Knife can be pretty good. Uh, I would probably prefer a more... Uh, something like long strider enhanced sleep isn't isn't super great but it is nice to have for, for your friends uh speak with animals i also think this is ritual um but it's not saying so i mean i could be wrong even if it does cast a spell slot it's until long rest and there's some fun animals you can talk to in this game it really just adds like a lot of uh interesting things to the game 
Uh, what are we grabbing for our first circle of the land? Well, this is a tough one. Uh, it really depends on who your friends are. I think the best one overall to grab is probably Grassland. Um, because these things aren't going to break your concentration. Uh, you can make somebody invisible. Pass Without Trace helps with stealth. Uh, that's good to get like some sort of advantage on your enemies in the early or even throughout the game. Uh, otherwise, I mean, Blur will help you. Silence is good. Any of these are really good. Uh, Misty Step plus Mirror Image can be good as well. However, I like Invisibility a little more. It is a concentration, but like I said, it doesn't really matter at this early. Uh, I don't think we should be doing anything that's super damaging. They're not going to help us throughout our playthrough. So throughout our playthrough, the most helpful thing is Grassland. And then after that, I would say uh, probably Coast is good to Misty Step for some like repositioning. And then level two, this is where we come online, guys, right? We need Moonbeam. Let's just clear this out. Let's clear this out because the most important thing here, Moonbeam, okay? Any other level two spells we want? No, not really, because we want to use all of our level two spell slots for Moonbeam. However, eventually we're going to want Enhance Ability. This can be good for helping your Charisma guy get some sort of advantage. It is cost a level two spell slot, right? Which is a little annoying. Otherwise, at this point in the game, we don't really... We're going to be Moonbeam sanctuarying everybody, right? So what are we focusing on here? We're focusing on things that aren't going to break that. Long Strider, Good Berry, Enhanced Leap, Speak with Animals. Um, animal Friendship, I think, probably actually breaks it. Are there any summons we can get at this level? No. Bark Skin might be nice to help with one of your teammates with a lower um, lower armor class. That could be good. Druid level 5. We're not really getting anything crazy anymore. Uh, we're getting a shitty cantrip. Uh, another spell slot, right? Maybe? I don't even think we get another spell slot. Yeah, we do. It went into Ice Knife. Uh, nothing really good to grab here, guys. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go ahead and take uh, Enhance Ability. Feet, though. Okay. You're probably thinking, Luke, what feet should I get? Ability Improvement. Uh, I, I'm sad. I know you guys are bored of using Ability Improvement in this game. Who isn't? But we all got to take it. There's nothing really else to grab here. Uh, we're, we're, kind of, we're kind of stuck with this. We're going to grab Ability Improvement, get 19 Wisdom, and then we're probably going to grab for our second feat and only other feet we're probably going to grab um what is it resilient so that we can get wisdom to 20 and just get some proficiencies in it we don't really give a shit about anything besides pumping our wisdom all right level six right another circle of the land thing let's see what what's good here um we get sleet storm we're gonna want something that gets sleet storm we get haste right do we want to break our concentration on moonbeam depends uh you might actually find that you've got an overpowered character you'd rather give haste to than use moonbeam and that's fine as long as you've got Sanctuary and you're holding up for your team, uh, if that person dies, you can heal them. Do you, you run out of heals or something, you could just run away and save save the day at least, not die, not wipe. Uh, if this is honor mode or whatever, you're, you're not going to die if this is normal difficulty most of the time with some decent builds, especially an optimized one like this. But yeah, Haste and Sleet Storm, since Sleet Storm won't break your Sanctuary, I think this is pretty good to uh, disrupt concentration on somebody who is, uh, you know, really pumping uh, like a cloud kill or some shit. You know what I mean? Uh, level 3 spells, nothing really good here. Uh, but we don't care about Ice Knife. Uh, protection from en energy, I'm going to be honest. This is such an ass thing. Like, just get, just use Warding Bond instead. But you might not have Warding Bond since you didn't uh, get to that level on Cleric. So this is okay. Uh, Daylight is okay, depending on what we've got. If we've got some Magical Darkness, Fang Death can be... Okay, like I said, all of these spells are just okay. Hey, level seven, nothing really super cool here. By the way, we got our uh, we got our owl bear uh, wild shape now. Uh, if you want to use this, I mean, technically you don't have to sanctuary. Uh, you could owl bear, do some damage. When then, uh, when your owl bear dies, you could go sanctuary and become utility. You know, you could do that throughout the whole game too. Uh, but I think that's more of like a oh shit button, you know, to use your wild shape at least with this build, uh, because your moonbeam is going to be putting in a lot of work. Uh, like I said, still the spells. Nothing really crazy. All right, another circle of the land. This one, uh, a little bit a little bit interesting uh, because we finally got our minor elemental. That's going to be real good. And Grasping Vine. Uh, this is another summon, guys, I believe. Uh, so two summons. You definitely want to grab Forest. Like I said, anything you can summon. Anything you can summon. We don't want protection from energy. Conjure Woodland Being. Just imagine. You're going to be a summoner, guys. You're going to be a summoner. I'm pretty sure Dominate Beast breaks it. Um, unfortunately, because I think this counts as a negative, but, uh, I mean, why not test it out, right? I don't have any beasts, but test it out for yourself, and if it does, you'll probably be fine, but, yeah, you definitely are gonna want Conjure that, because you can just Conjure these things constantly, uh, have a lot of different summons, 
and go fucking crazy because they're not going to break your sanctuary and you still got your moonbeam you're kind of you're kind of op honestly uh for, like i said for your other feet you could scroll the, through these and find something maybe but i don't think so guys i think it's just another resilient wisdom and accept that for the 20 wisdom circle of the land again what are we looking at here uh we're getting another conjure elemental you might want greater restoration uh but you could also do wall of stone it's not that good but it's fun you know you get a little sage wall pretty cool uh but you want the conjure elemental for the additional summon uh planar binding like i said it might piss your sanctuary off i'm not sure but it's worth worth grabbing uh greater restoration if you didn't get it you can grab as well uh polymorph is just fun too but i'm pretty sure that breaks it but uh greater restoration good to break somebody out of a charm petrification or stun i've never been petrified in my life in this game honestly but stunned i've been uh plenty of times charmed a little bit as well mainly stunned uh by any of those fucking mind flares they'll stun you and they'll ruin your life so having greater restoration on call for that it's pretty good however are you really going to want to use uh that high level spell slot instead of your moonbeam uh that's up to you can trips they make you take resistance i'm so sorry for you uh yeah this is really just the cusp of the build though until we get to level 12 which is right now and we get our level six spell slot do you want to cast it on moonbeam maybe do you want to cast it on heal maybe do you want to cast it on Heroes Feast? I'd probably say definitely. Uh, Heroes Feast is great. It's just going to give everybody extra HP. Um, and Wisdom saves with advantage. That's not bad. But the additional HP stacks on top of aid if you have aid. Uh, if you didn't, well, I mean, you basically had to choose between getting this level 6 spell slot for Heroes Feast or getting aid. Plus, you're getting some camp supplies. And who doesn't love getting camp supplies, guys, right? So that's the build. You are immortal, basically. Uh, you can deal damage with Moonbeam, and you can make a bunch of fucking summons. Uh, very cool. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy the build. Uh, I stream. Uh, just gonna probably start an honor mode solo playthrough this Sunday. Probably with this build, too, I think. Uh, if you want to see me test it out live Sunday. Um, and if not, well, I mean, every Sunday, really. If not, you can always uh, leave a like on the video. It helps a lot. Leave a comment. I love reading all your guys' comments and talking to you guys. And also, uh, sub for more Baldur's Gate 3 builds. I've got a lot of other good builds you guys can check out, too. Uh, it'll be linked. You know, you'll see the playlist on the left side. All right, guys. Peace and air grease. Enjoy the build.